All right, what we're going to be illustrating here is the use of an I2C serial protocol operating an LCD display. You've seen these with Arduino, either though it had all kinds of libraries that never told you how it worked. I finally figured it out when I found a Python program that told me the address codes, and so I rewrote it over using wiring pi or other C programs. In addition, I added a bunch of functions from my other programming with a microchip PIC that was programmed in C. And you'll find out if you're very careful, a lot of these Python and C programs really are easy to translate into each other. So let me go ahead and X run this program and you can see what you're going to get. Okay, this is using wiring pi and I use a Gainey editor. It's I2C programmed in C, not Python. It's like Arduino, fast and easy. Hello world, you can type strings. I can type integers. I can type floats. And so forth. I can even tell the uh, cursor where to go and so forth. These programs, like I, like I said, I added to this, you've probably seen in some of my other work. Well, this is a new variation of it. And I think this is very easy to use for an LCD display. And this is on the Raspberry Pi, not Arduino, but Raspberry Pi. So, let's take a look at what is involved in programming this. And and let's have some fun. Let's take a little closer look at the electronics in this project. This is, um, of course, as you saw in the preceding video clip, how to use a L an I2C LCD. This is the heart of what you saw in the video, is this little circuit board. Here's your contrast control. It has its own little built-in microprocessor chip has four connections, five volts, data, clock, ground. These are very inexpensive. Um, they have them for two-line and four-line devices. My first problem in writing this code is I didn't know what code sequence to even write to this I2C LCD display setup. You can get these libraries and stuff for Arduino but they don't tell you nothing. All the code is hidden underneath in compiled binaries, and I'm not going to sit around and get a, uh, and decompile these things and figure this out. They probably won't tell you much anyway. So I got lucky searching around. Somebody had wrote the command codes for a Python program, which I rewrote into C in this case. In addition, I added, I ported over these commands that you see to the right, such as to display an integer, display a float. I can move the cursor to either line or either location on the display. I can clear the LCD display. I can type a line of text, or I can type just a single character. All of these were ported over from my microchip PIC and Arduino programs elsewhere on the website. Let's take a brief look at the most obvious one, LCD Locate. Okay, if you look at the, uh, there is a memory space in the display. 0x80 is line 1. In other words, it's line 1 is row 0, column 0. That is here, where the H is. All right. While 0xc0 is line 2, is row 1, column 0, where the L is. Remember, these things start counting at 0, not 1. And it's the same thing, line 0, line 1, column 0, column 1. Keep that in mind. So if I wanted to use LCD location commands, 
and say I wanted to put an F here where this first L is, it would be line 1 plus 3. What I did was set a um, fixed variable line 1 was equal to 0x80. And line 2 was 0xc0. Then you can choose, remember this is a 16, this is a 16 character by 2 line display. Uh, I believe this also works for a 16 character by 4 line display. I've never used one, but for everything I was told, that will also work. And of course, you would have to have line 3 and 4. You'd have to look the uh, address locations up for 3 and 4. I have those if somebody happens to want them. Here is the basic electrical connections between the little microprocessor chip and the LCD itself. It's using it in what I call the half byte mode. I'll write the upper four bits, then I'll write and then I'll um, write the lower four bits. You manipulate these two lines, R, S, and E, and that um, displays the uh, data wherever you want it, or it carries out a command such as clear the display. This is your um, contrast control. Uh, this is not the exact schematic. This is an example schematic that's somewhat close. You could probably build one of these yourself if you wanted to program this up to be an I2C interface. Let's take a little closer look now at the programming now that we have an idea how the hardware functions. In, in subroot functions such as type float and type integer, and that should be a lowercase t, um, I'm going to use a command called sprintf. It, it's a function that converts integers and floats to a string and stores them in a buffer which is then sent to the type line command. Type line can take an ASCII string directly. For example, I can simply uh, call the command type line hello world in quotes, and it will print hello world right out on the display that you saw in the previous slide. How is this done? Let's move down just a tad. And look at this. This is type line. Let's review what is a character string. Well, a string is an array of characters. The count starts at 0 and goes to wherever it is, n minus 1. That is, if I have a, if I have a text string that has 10 characters, they're going to be numbered 0 through 9. Keep that in mind. And a text string is always terminated with a null character, which I think is a zero, or backslash zero. So what does type line do? We pass a constant character. We're passing what is essentially a pointer to the address of the string. We're not passing the string. We're passing the location of the string. We're going to use a while loop. All the while loop is going to do is it's going to look at the string pointer and it's going to do LCD byte, whatever the character is, point it to by the string and send it on to the other two to send where it's sent on up to the display. Then it's going to increment here the pointer and it's going to keep sending the characters until it runs into the null, null character and the while loop terminates. So, that's how um, type line works, and type line works directly with the LCD byte command, and the LCD byte command works through the LCD toggle enable bits command. So it's sort of one, two, three. Now I'm just going to walk you through the main program itself and point out some highlights of it. Remember the opening video was showing you 
Well, let's just walk through here. I have to include these libraries to get it to work. These two are particular to wiring Pi, and these two are standard C libraries. The I2C address of my uh, device is 0x27. I've defined several constants. Well, if you, um, you, you're either going to send a character or a command to the LCD circuitry, and that's what this uh, tells the program. I've defined line 1 is 0x80, line 2 is 0xc0, LCD backlight on is 0x08, and this defines a command called enable. All of these are fixed declarations. You use enable somewhere, it's going to be this number. Nonetheless, as in all C programs, and this is a real C program, I have to declare my subroutines before main. Main has to have an integer return. Here is my opening brace. Moving on down. I have to do wiring pi setup. Okay, what if, if something goes wrong? It will exit the program with a 1 and it's terminated right here. It's going to jump right out. Then I will have to use an integer value called file descriptor. And I'm going to do the wiring pi setup routine with the I2C address 0x27. In this case, I you see this commented out. I did this originally just to see what the file descriptor integer number was, and it was 4. I'm going to call the command LCD initiate. That's going to clear the display, set the cursor back to line 0, column 0, and so forth. Also, I've de declared a character array 1 as hello world. Now, what you saw in the while loop, and this would keep going over and over and over the messages you saw on the dis being displayed on the display. I went to line 1, wrote using wiring pi. Went to line 2 with the gainy editor. Delayed 2 seconds. Next line 1, I2C program, line 2 in C, not Python, and so forth. Line 1, Arduino-like. Line 2, fast and easy, delay 2 seconds. I went ahead and cleared the LCD display. And I went back to line 1, and I went to type line array 1. And what was array 1? It was the hello world that I declared earlier. And on line 1, you are going to see hello world. Delay 2 seconds. I'm going to clear the LCD again. It's going to default the cursor back to line 0, location 0. I'm going to type the text string int in a couple of spaces. I declared an integer value as 20,125. Now, follow at the end that you would see on the display, you would see integer 20,125. I wrote that to the type int command, and that's what you saw in the line in the video. Moving on down, delayed another two seconds. LCD locate line two. I'm going to type line float. That's a text string. I'm going to set a float, what I call float value, to uh, 10,045.25989. There's a reason why I did that. And then I'm going to display float value. So that was what you saw on the display. All right, here's my two. Uh, let's look at these two functions or subroutines, type float and type int. Here is where I sent my float value that was 
six decimal places of little numbers. I declare a local character array or buffer 20 bytes wide. Then I use the sprintf function. Instead of printing to the screen like um, printf, this prints the ASCII output to a buffer as an ASCII string. The 4.2f here, what this does mainly is it limit it rounds off the decimal point, the area past the decimal point to two places instead of six. And of course, it's going to operate on the whatever I pass with the variable my float. Type int is not much different. We pass an integer value to this. We declare a local uh, text string array. Again, sprintf will take whatever the value of i, which is the integer value I pass to it, store it as a text string in array 1, and in both cases I just simply use type line to, uh, to display it on the dis LCD display based on where I put the decimal point with LCD locate. All right, so that's our basic run through. You can go to the corresponding web page. The link will be supplied and read all of this in more minute detail. I appreciate your time watching this. Uh, please visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com for the most interesting and best little electronic projects out there. Okay, so I'm boasting, so what? Uh, hope I'm right. Thanks for listening.